So one of the things that we haven't quite been able to pinpoint exactly to a patient is, what is your risk of surgery? And why are we so obsessed with minimized complications and minimizing risk of surgery? Because I will tell you that we now understand that for some patients with Crohn's who have very small segment, like 10 to 15 centimeters of a small bowel, already has bowel wall damage at diagnosis, which it's not uncommon. I mean, it's not the majority of patients, but a certain subset of patients, probably around 15%, will present complicated at diagnosis. And so if indeed there's a subset who already have scar tissue and it's a short segment, surgery up front and then treating in the post-op prevention is a much better strategy. I often talk to patients that it's a lot easier to kind of fight a downhill battle, which would be disease out, patients resected, anastomosis, meaning primarily put back together, and then we're choosing our treatment. It work, our meds work a lot better in a prevention mode than an activation mode. And so that's always a conversation we have in those that I'm suspicious should go to surgery up front. But patients are really scared and they believe that their whole goal is to prevent surgery. So that's another miscommunication between patients and physicians is that surgery could be amazing in the right patient population. So if indeed surgery is the outcome we're trying to prevent in a patient who doesn't need surgery up front, so let's take that 80% or so of patients who present without strictures and, and fistulas, and our goal is to not reach the end point, and we, need, we have that time you know, to really work together, is that the idea is that if the complication rate in first year is 17% and half of those patients would go to surgery, you're dealing with what 10% of patients may have been surgery in the first year. And so, and every year, it may be a cumulative 10%. Before the biologic era, seven to eight out of 10 Crohn's patients went to surgery over time because we did not have drugs that can heal mucosa or, bowel, or prevent bowel wall damage. We never had that before. So we were used to it and saying, well, if you were one of those patients, once you scar, we'll take it out, we'll start over, and the cycle starts again. But that's why knowing the risk, tying it all together, knowing the risk of developing complication, which will result in surgery, intervening early, you can prevent surgery. So I think that surgery has a very important place and it shouldn't be looked at as a failure because it's not the drugs that failed, it, the disease was already, the bowel wall damage had set in. Nothing you could do. There's no miracle drug that was reversing the scar tissue. So that aspect of surgery and its role needs to be better communicated because people are thinking that that's where they want to prevent, but in essence, it may be your first move. So understanding the role of surgery in Crohn's is, is evolving as we understand what our therapies can and cannot do. Surgery is indicated in Crohn's disease in several different situations. If there is a limited segment of disease that does not respond to medical therapy, then we can remove that and restore the patient's quality of life. But most often, surgery in Crohn's disease is for complications, such as strictures that lead to obstructions or strategic fistulas that impact on symptoms and quality of life for individuals, or if there are infectious complications such as an abscess. In addition, on occasion, patients with refractory colitis may actually need a colectomy in order to improve their uh, quality of life and long-term well-being. The key to surgery in Crohn's disease is to limit the operation to the affected bowel. We don't need extensive margins. Indeed, we can even open up a narrowed area with what's known as strictureplasty without even removing the bowel. So gut conserving therapy is really important from a surgical standpoint to minimize the amount of uh, bowel that's uh, removed. One uh, important thing to think about is how the need for surgery might have shifted in recent years. Um, the biologics were launched almost 20 years ago uh, in Fliximab in uh, 1998 in the United States. 
And uh, so as that uh, almost two decades has gone by, you can gradually see uh, shifts in the need for surgery, delays in the need for surgery, and even uh, lower uh, surgery rates. There was quite a learning curve for you know, learning to use the biologics and to understanding the idea that they will be most effective if you introduce them early in the disease course if you want to prevent uh, complications and need for surgery, which often come out of those complications. So I think that we're kind of at the end of the beginning in terms of um, what may, might be possible with reducing uh, surgery uh, rates. We've seen some reduction and I anticipate that we will see more reduction in the years to come. So a, a question that will often be asked is um, how affecting surgery rates affects the overall outcomes of the disease. And the way that I think of surgery is it's sort of uh, the ultimate bowel destruction. You're completely you know, eliminating pieces of bowel. And so this can be a big deal if you uh, resect the ileocecal valve, you set the patient up for uh, bacterial overgrowth. Um, with resection of the terminal ileum, the patients will get set up for bile acid diarrhea. If they have enough ileal resection, they get set up for fat malabsorption and malnutrition. And all of these uh, comorbidities, which are induced by surgery, end up being largely uh, irreversible and just degrade the patient's function and introduce an element of disability. So if you want the patient to be as normal as possible, the trick is to get endoscopic uh, healing and clinical remission uh, before irreversible bowel damage is done and before surgery is required so that you don't get the bowel damage from surgery itself. So I, I think that those treatment goals, which were quite difficult to achieve 20 years ago, have become increasingly uh, feasible using earlier intervention and a treat-to-target strategy in uh, late uh, 2017.